the computers are an extension of ourselves. And when we die, there's like we have like a digital ghost. It's, it's quite eerie, actually, when someone dies and, and they're, but everything online is still there. The population collapse is, is uh, one of the biggest threats to the future of human civilization. And that is what is going on right now. It's important to take whatever actions we can think of to address the existential risks that affect the future of, of consciousness. Well, you know, the, the, the first units that, that we tend to make are for jobs that are dangerous, boring, repetitive, and things that people don't want to do. And, uh, you know, I, I think we'll have like an interesting prototype uh, sometime this year. We, we might have something useful next year, but I think quite likely within at least two years. Uh, and then we'll see rapid growth year over year of the usefulness of the humanoid robots um, and decrease in cost and, and scaling up production. Well, I think the cost is actually not going to be uh, crazy high, um, like less than a car. Initially, things will be expensive because it, it'll be new technology at low right. production volume. The complexity and cost of a car is greater than that of a humanoid robot. Um, so I would expect that it's going to be less than a car or at least equivalent to a cheap car. I wouldn't worry about the, the sort of putting people out of a job thing. Um, I think we're actually going to have and, and already do have a massive shortage of labor. So I, 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 th I think we'll, we will have um, not, not people out of work, but actually still a shortage of labor even in the future. This really will be a world of abundance. Any goods and services uh, will be available to anyone who wants them. That it'll be so cheap to have goods and services, it'll be ridiculous. It, it will be a world of abundance. The only scarcity that will exist in the future is that which we decide to create ourselves as humans. Well, like I said, you know, AI and robotics will bring out what might be termed the age of abundance. Um, other people have used this word. And, and that this is my prediction will be an age of abundance um, for everyone. Um, I guess there's uh, the, the dangers would be the, the artificial general intelligence or digital super intelligence uh, decouples from a, co a collective human will and uh, goes in a direction that for some reason we don't like, uh, for whatever, whatever direction it might go. You know, that's what it, sort of the idea behind Neuralink is to try to more tightly couple uh, collective human will to uh, the to, to digital uh, super intelligence uh, and also along the way solve a, a, a lot of brain injuries and spinal injuries and that kind of thing so uh, even if it doesn't succeed in the greater goal it will I think it will succeed in in the uh, goal of alleviating uh, brain and spine damage I, I'm not saying that I have some a certain uh, answer to that risk I'm just saying like like maybe one of the things that would be good for ensuring that uh, the future is one that we want is to more tightly couple uh, the human will, collective human will, to digital intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the issue that we face here is that we're already um, a cyborg, if you think about it. The computers uh, are an extension of ourselves. Um, and when we die, there's like we have like a digital ghost. You know, all of our text messages and social media and emails and it's, it's quite eerie, actually, when someone dies, and, and they're, but everything online is still there. But, but you say, like, what, what's the limitation? What, what is it that inhibits human-machine symbiosis? It's the data rate. When you communicate, especially with a phone, you're moving your thumbs right. very slowly. So you're like moving your two little meat sticks <laughs> right. at, at a rate that's maybe 10 bits per second, optimistically 100 bits per second. And computers are, are communicating at the gigabit uh, level and beyond. I mean, the, the fundamental principles of uh, of reading neurons, uh, sort so of doing read-write on neurons w with tiny electrodes, um, have been demonstrated for decades. Um, so it, it's not like uh, this is uh, the, the concept is new. The, 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 the problem is that there's no product uh, that works well that you can go and uh, and buy. So it's it's all sort of in research labs right. um, and. It's it's not it's uh, like there's always like some cord sticking out of your your head and it it's quite gruesome and it's it's really um, there's there's no good product uh, mm. that 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 actually does a good job and is high bandwidth and safe and something you'd actually that you could buy and would want to buy. So the 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 way to think of the uh, neural device is kind of like a, a Fitbit or an Apple Watch. Um, that's where we, we, we take out a, a sort of a, a small section of skull about the size of a quarter, um, replace that with uh, 
what in many ways really is very much like um, you know, Fitbit, Apple Watch, or, or some kind of smartwatch thing, and, and but but with with tiny tiny wires, very very tiny wires, t- 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 wires so tiny it's hard to even see them. Hmm. Um, and it's very important to have very tiny wires so that you, uh, when they're implanted, they don't they don't damage the brain. Well, I, I do want to emphasize we're we're at a very, at, at an early stage, and so um, it really will be many years before we have anything uh, approximating a high bandwidth uh, neural interface uh, that allows for uh, AI human symbiosis. For, for many years, we will just be solving uh, brain injuries and spinal injuries. For, probably a decade um, this is the, and this is not something that will suddenly one day it'll will have this incredible uh, sort of uh, whole brain interface um, it, it's going to be like I said at least a decade of, of really just solving um, of, uh, brain injuries and, and spinal injuries um, that I, I really try to work as as, as much as possible uh, you know to, to the edge of sanity basically uh, because the you know, t- Tesla's getting to the point where, probably we'll get to the point later this year, where every good, every high quality minute of thinking um, uh, is a million dollars to, to uh, impact on, on Tesla. So, <laughs> which is insane. Um, so, I mean, the basic, you know, if, if, if Tesla's doing sort of $2 billion a week, let's say in revenue, it's sort of $300 million a day, seven days a week, Population collapse is uh, one of the biggest threats to the future of human civilization, and that is what is going on right now. Uh, I guess, the, uh, like, I, I, I really want to make sure that there is a good future for humanity, um, and that we're on a path to understanding the nature of the universe, um, the meaning of life, why are we here, how do we get here, um, and in order to understand the nature of the universe and all these fundamental questions. Um, we must expand the scope and scale of consciousness. Uh, certainly, it must not diminish or go out. We, we, we certainly we won't understand this. So I, I would say I'm motivated by curiosity more than anything, um, and uh, just a desire to think about the future and not be sad. You know, and um, I'm sometimes sad. But I, I mostly I'm I, I'm I mean I'm feeling I guess rel- relatively optimistic about the future these days. Um, there are certainly um, some big risks that humanity faces. Uh, I think the, the population collapse is a really big deal that um, I wish more people would would, would think about because um, the, the birth rate is far below as, uh, what's needed to sustain civilization at its current, at its current level. Um, and uh, you know, there's obviously um, we, we need to take action on climate sustainability, which is is, how, is, is being done. Um, and we need to secure the future of consciousness by being a multi-planet species. Um, we need to address the... Essentially, we, it's important to take whatever actions we can think of to address the existential risks that affect the, the future of, of consciousness. Well, I think if you want the future to be good, you must make it so. Take action to make it good. And it will be.